How's it going, guys? Richie here, very lucky to have Shah. She's going to be running us through um, some mobility work, especially with the chest and shoulders. Get a lot of shoulder stuff happening this week, so um, she's going to give us some tools, and I'm going to upload this as a video so you guys can keep referring back to it using me as a demo sausage. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to hand over to Shah shortly. We've got a Zoom session happening at the same time, so I thought we would film it both. Jay's going to just film us as we go. I've already introduced you. Oh, right. <laughs> Hello. Oh, wide fur. Bugger <laughs> um, it. Hi guys, so this week we've actually done a lot of um, upper body shoulder work today, um, like this week, so what you might find is you might be struggling with shoulder pain, um, a little bit of tightness around the pecs and the back and even the thoracic area and neck. Um, so we're just going to talk about a couple of things that we can do to mobilise these areas that are really actually important to quite uh, to keep your shoulder nice and safe and uh, so you can actually do your above shoulder stuff. So um, what we want to start with is to just to show you how tight your shoulders are in the morning without doing any work on it. So range of motion, what you might find is true range of motion um, is 180 degrees, but at the moment Richie's ribs are flaring up a little bit. So what we want to do is make sure that there's no compensation with the lower back and thoracic area. So you're actually really good, but Rich probably does a lot of work on it anyway. Yeah. 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 And what we don't want to do is poke that chin out and and what you'll find is shoulder range you'll feel really quite tight in that thoracic yeah. area. It's tight. So bring those shoulders down. Alright, so just a little bit of anatomy on the shoulder is we've got pecs, we've got the humerus, so the upper part of the arm, and we've got the rotator cuff. Um, you'll commonly hear it as the rotor cuff. It's actually the rotator cuff. There's four muscles in there. There's supraspinatus. Actually, can I get you to take your shirt off? Ooh. So there's, are we in front of the camera? I need to come up with you. Yeah. So there's supraspinatus, which sits just under the trap, and it comes out here. There's infraspinatus, which sits just under the spine of the scapula. There's teres minor, and then there's underneath the scapula called subscapularis. Now the one that gets uh, predominantly impinged is supraspinatus, which is the one that sits right under the acronium. There's not much joint space in there, um, so whenever there's some kind of rolling of that humerus forward, that joint space will get impinged, which will either impinge a bursa or that supraspinatus tendon. Yep. So our idea is to loosen off pec and infraspinatus so we sit that shoulder nice and back, okay? So if we turn around, so where we want to go is we want to grab the area that just sits kind of underneath here and this muscle comes here, okay? So when that gets tight, that'll draw the head of the humerus forward. Not a good position, okay? And coupled with that, turn around, sorry, we're going to have infraspinatus, so and Richie's is really tight, okay? <laughs> Which is around about there. Now it's different on different people because we're all built differently, okay? But these are just around about areas that we're gonna trigger point. So, we've got a couple of tools that we can use. We can use, um, I think we've got a, a ball. Yeah. Which is um, brutal. Also, the peanut of pain. These are the most simple things that you can make. Four golf balls, two tennis balls, um, and cheap. You don't have to pay 20, 30 bucks for a modality when you can go to a golf course and get some golf balls out of the pond. <laughs> but there's also, you can get things called lacrosse balls, golf balls, anything that's got a little bit of pressure. This one's not as pressure, but anything that's round and that will fit into a little kind of crevice like this, okay? So there's three ways that you can do this. You can either do it on the floor, the wall, or a door kind of space. We don't have door space here, so that's where we need to try it. I don't recommend it on a wall or a floor because you'll be kissing it, um, and that's not very comfortable. So let's come over here. So Rich will find that spot. Yeah. And can you see us over there? 
and he will put as much pressure as he can on it. Then what he can do is bring that pec forward and really kind of push yourself into that, okay? Yeah. And then you can just move your hand up and down. Show them how good yeah. Ball is here in my chest. Good. So you want to actually do that for about two minutes, okay? So what you want to do is try and keep the same pressure on it the whole time. Oh, but you've got a pyramid of pain. This one's brutal, but it's actually really effective. So four golf balls. And once again, you find that spot. The same pressure for about two minutes. And what you'll find is it feels like it's melting underneath, okay? Mm. So the pressure, you'll sit there and go, oh, it's not eight out of 10 pain anymore. It's probably more about a six or a four. And if that's the case, then you can actually put more pressure on it. But as long as it's the same pressure and you're not kind of osculating, if that makes sense. So it's all spot, yeah. The next one is infraspinatus. But this one will need to be done on a wall, okay? So, now if you find that hard, what I like to do is, yeah, is you can actually put it under your armpit like this. Yeah, that's a little bit. Yeah. Put down a bit. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there, there. Sorry. Yep, and then, You'll just once again put the same pressure on it. And then you just do some movements. And what you can do reach as well is put your arm in that degree and then do that. Yeah. Now this one can be actually quite brutal. Um, and you'll find that most people use the crystal will be really super tight. Um, sure, that's really... Right kind of around there, okay? Rich has got really good muscle tone around here. You can actually see where all these muscles are. All right, so you want to do that for two minutes. What you can then do is retest your range of motion, okay? So, standing on up. And what you might find is that you'll go, oh, that actually feels so much looser yeah, now. Much better. Yeah. yeah, much easier. So that's only, that's only two parts of it, okay? The other part of uh, shoulder range is thoracic mobility. Um, now, a lot of people don't actually work through thoracic because they think it's shoulder, that's what I need to work on, but you actually need to also try and release and relax your thoracic spine, okay? Because that is actually a determining factor on whether your shoulder mobility is good or not. So, we can either have a foam roller or rolled up towel okay so if you don't have a foam roller at home that's absolutely fine so rolled up towel are you happy with yeah, yeah, all right yeah. so we'll just put on foam roller first and so richie will find his lengthways on the foam roller that's the first position then lay down okay and as you can see he's quite relaxed over this the shoulders and chest are quite open, all right, but he's not, he's not compensating the lower back either. And then what Richie will do is he'll kind of like bear, um, what do you call that? Nice. Snow angel. Now, Richie's quite high off the ground, so it's going to be almost impossible for him to keep contact with the ground. But this is just a nice kind of chest opener and thoracic mm. mobility area. This is just one position, okay? So probably spend two minutes doing that. Feels really good. Good. And now the second position is we'll actually change the, the position of the roller to, le uh, to lengthways. Now, men don't wear bras, but if they did, that's where they would start, okay? So the first one is we just want Rich to lay back hands just touching the ears so you're not cranking your neck okay and he just wants to lay over don't worry about your ribs and what they're doing in this position you 
really just want to get some extension through that thoracic spine, okay? So, now we spend all of our day, generally, on a computer, hunched over, on our phones, driving, so we need to get some extension through that um, upper back. Now, you can then start to move back and forth. Now there's a couple of positions, yep, so you're like in a bridge position here, and it's just rolling up and down, okay? Good. And then what Richie can do is cross his hands over his chest and kind of almost hug himself, and then, yeah, back and forth. And this feels really, really good. You might even get some cracks out of your back. Beautiful. Another two minutes of that. And then you want to stand up and retest range, okay? Beautiful. So this is probably where you'll find, yeah, already, like that, those ribs aren't flaring as much. He had good range anyway, but he was compensating a little bit because of his torso. That's, um, now that's only probably 30 seconds of each, each movement. So if you do two minutes of each movement, you'll actually start to feel a lot looser through the upper back, through those shoulders, and that neck will start to release, okay? A lot of people's headaches come from upper, upper back and neck tightness, okay? So if you're, if you're suffering from headaches, this is actually a really good one to do as well. So now, thoracic mobility as well. Um, we want to get into some rotation, okay? One hand down, and then you thread. And just relax that upper body. So what we're effectively doing is getting some rotation through that thoracic spine. So that was the side position and the forward position. As you can see, it's got some nice rotation happening there. This isn't just going to be for thoracic spine, you'll get some kind of movement through that lumbar as well. And what you find is everything works in conjunction with each other. So if you've got a tight thoracic spine, you would no doubt have a tight lumbar and vice versa, okay? If you work on one, you'll actually start to loosen the other up. Two minutes, and then you swap sides. Beautiful. Now don't worry too much about what your neck is doing. So Rich right now is just looking down, but if you want to, you can actually look towards, towards this arm and just rest and breathe, okay? Now breathing is extremely important in this. The out breath will allow you to um, really relax and get into like a, a nice relaxed position. Every out breath relaxes those muscles in that nervous system. Right. Yep, and what Richie's doing is he's going to open with a breath, okay? So he's going to watch his hands. And as he's going out down, he's exhaling. And then he's coming back in. And then deep breath in. And then out, exhaling. And what you'll see is the longer Richie stays here, breathing, the more his hands We'll come down to that ground, okay? Now this one's excellent on that whole spine. And the more you do this, this is also a pec stretch as well, okay? So not only is it a pec stretch, it's a thoracic rotation and lumbar rotation. You want to do that both sides. really secure the shoulders. This is just the mobility side as well. What we've got to think about is um, strength and making sure that the scapula is sitting nicely on that shoulder, on that rib cage, that those shoulders are backing down, that rib cage is down. Possibly it's actually quite a nice position to be in, but it's 
almost impossible to hold it, but as long as you're aware of that position, that's a good, that's a good start. Um, that's, uh, so that's pretty much the upper body mobility work today. Um, the question here guys for the guys on YouTube is that um, uh, Kelly Barker, one of our uh, Cosmic 4566 family, she's got a little bit of impingement uh, and bursitis and uh, Charles just talking about the importance of you know, doing these positions so that the shoulder uh, drops back and down, the shoulder blade gets into the right position so it's not um, irritating the nurse anymore. Yeah. So, um, and uh, you feeling like you've had a little bit of relief this week doing a little bit of physical therapy and that kind of thing as well, Kel? So, so physical therapy yeah. with a practitioner that you guys uh, see, and obviously along with doing stuff like this, doing those together, it's a win-win. So you yeah. have to do both. It's really yeah, important. it's no use just getting um, uh, a little bit of release work done, like once a week, passively through your therapist. This is something that you should actually incorporate every single day into your routine. Um, now, if you can't do it every single day, every second day, okay, um, because it will actually really um, save your shoulders. And as you know, crossfitters, I think 90% of crossfitters will sit there at one stage and go, oh, my shoulders are really sore. Because we might have done pull-ups, we might have done a hell of a lot of overhead squats, or like yesterday. Um, and if you're not mobile enough, you're going to compensate with the areas. This is why we get these improvements. So. Um, but next time what we will do is we'll talk about uh, lower limb and what we'll do with, with regards to our hips and um, because once we get pain in our hips and muscles are really tight in our hips it will cause pain in our knees and our ankles and even our upper back so remembering the, the old song the hip bone is connected to the knee bone that's exactly what it is exactly yeah so and as human beings we actually we work amazingly if something's not working right, so we we'll compensate for it. So yeah. But um, if you've got any questions at all, just put it on the YouTube. Yeah, or the um, post, Facebook, post Facebook group. Facebook group. Yeah. I'm happy to answer anything. So. So. Um, Thanks, Thanks so much to Shaw guys, and also um, looking at trying to make this a consistent thing every Friday. Um, it's always like this, we started a few people, obviously people get to care about it. And this is the stuff that Shaw and I, was, we speak about this all the time with Jay, um, that we should be doing more of. We always focus so much on our training, but not enough on this stuff. So this is the stuff that counts. Certainly when we start to get, we call it over 35. <laughs> <laughs> Masters athletes. Over 23. Over 23, exactly <laughs> right. So guys, have a good weekend. I hope that helped. Um, so we've got a big Anzac Day workup out coming up tomorrow. Um, but I'm a big fan of taking the weekend off if you've got a big week of training and enjoy the outdoors and stuff like that. So thank you so much to Sean for Thanks, her guys. time. You're welcome. Yeah.